Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today we are looking at a Silvalli Metals list with a bunch of new cards from Ultra Prism. So as always, we'll do the basic concept, talk through the deck, look at some matchups, some techs, and uh, my closing thoughts on the archetype. So here is the basic concept. Uh, Silvalli came second in the EUIC, and this is something that people have always forgotten. Uh, I feel like people see this deck as kind of like a one-hit wonder. It was almost built as a counter deck to Gardevoir at the time. And people just disrespect Silvalli quite a bit right now. I understand that Enhanced Hammer is big in the meta and that's one of the reasons why it's way less powerful. But it's really just done this huge placement and hasn't followed up the success. And I think it is sort of a discredit to Silvalli because I still think he's a very powerful card. And uh, inherently you can build a pretty nice shell around him just because of his ability being a nice little addition to the deck. A good GX attack, we've seen how often Lycanroc GX is being used right now. Obviously Lycanroc has, you know, a cheaper GX attack and the better ability. <laughs> but um, it's comparable in terms of you can get a one-hit KO at times. And he still has energy acceleration from his main attack as well. So uh, Silvalli still has a bunch going for him and he really is sort of being like disrespected in the meta. I think post Ultra Prism that may be no longer the case because uh, we gain a lot of new metal support. Pretty much in London, we just jammed with like Seller Steelers because they were the best option we had. But now we actually have good metal stuff that we can use, and that's really, really good. Uh, now we have the good typing still because Glaceon's coming out, Gardevoir and Ninetales may still be around here and there. Um, so it's a good type to have. And on top of that, we have way better metal types. So they're just, in general, we're playing a better 60 cards now. We're way less of a counter deck. And additionally, if we get the new memory tools, this whole video is about a big if. If we get the stuff from uh, the Battle Boost expansion, which we have a bunch of the cards for. That's where, like, the uh, Ferramosa, the Zerkatry, the Celesteela, and a bunch of, like, reprint cards. They all came in a Japanese set called uh, Battle Boost. And there's uh, two of these uh, memory tools for Silvalli in there, and most notably a fire one. And that's what I'm going to be playing in this list. Obviously, completely disregard this video if we don't get those tools, but I would pretty much bet like a good amount of money that we will get the tools in the English set because we've got pretty much everything else from Battle Boost. We just require uh, those tools, and there's a few other Pokemon as well here and there, but um, yeah. The list is assuming that we'll get the new memory tool, and that's why I feel that um, this deck is way better placed going into Ultra Prism. So, let's jump into the Pokemon. First of all, the 3-3 three, three line of Silvalli GX. Uh, Type Null, still a really good Pokemon to lead with. Armor Press can keep you alive, even against things like Zoroark, which is definitely worth noting, because uh, that could be really important. Uh, there are also a bunch of other stage ones out there, like Golisopod doing First Impression. The armor press would keep us alive, so that's really important. Um, and in general, 110 HP is strong. And then we have the Silvalli GX, 210, uh, as we've seen with a bunch of the stage ones. Gyro unit, great ability, giving all of our other dudes on this slide, pretty much all of our other Pokemon now have free retreat as long as uh, the ability is live. Which, as we know, it's quite often the case. Garbodor is way less played at the moment, so that's really good. Um, it just means that essentially everything can manipulate around the board way more freely and that's just really helpful throughout the game for switching between our attackers the only thing that is chunky is the Silvalli GX itself but we still play Guzmas to get around that it shouldn't be too big of an issue then his two attacks turbo drive uh, does 120 for the three colorless you attach your basic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench and this is going to be really nice for the dust main necrozma you can see just below him, and also for powering up other Silvalli GX, and maybe even things like Orangaroo or uh, Registeel if we need them to. So uh, Silvalli, really, really powerful. This is a two-hit KO attack. It does 120, uh, but we are playing some important uh, memory tool cards, which means we can hit for weakness on the fire types. Or oh, sorry, we become a fire type, so we hit for weakness on the new metal stuff coming out, and we also hit for weakness on... Uh, things like Leafeon Decidueye or other Decidueye variants and even like straight Glycopod or Glycopod Zoroark. We can hit for weakness on those and we're still going to play the Fighting Memory card because Zoroark's still really powerful and that's worth countering. So um, 
yeah, Sylvalai with those tools, still very potent, still very dangerous. Taking a one hit KO and accelerating to the bench is a really powerful prospect. And that's the idea of this list. Uh, for those of you who've watched some previous videos, you can think about this as a very similar build to Turbo Metals. But instead of just going like raw basics, we're throwing in the Sylvalai line and seeing how that helps the deck. And overall, I think it may be a little bit better, maybe more techy. Uh, but I think he just provides enough to be worth it. The Rebel GX attack is also really good. 50 times uh, each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So they have to maintain their bench or they can fall prey to a one-hit KO. We also have the GX attack of Dosmane Necrozma. So either way, at some point in the game, we'll get one big blow up. Even if we can't hit stuff for weakness. So that's good to know. Two Registeel for the Turbo Arm attack. Mainly, you can get more energy acceleration going. This can be onto your other Silver Allies. It can be, again, onto the Dosmane Necrozmas. These are all important. And what is actually quite important is the 30 damage that we can get from Turbo Arm. It means that a Turbo Drive then with a Choice Band can go up to 150. So the previous 30 from Turbo Arm does 180. So that's good for setting up numbers against things like Tapu Lele or any other 180 HP Pokemon that is happening to be in the active position. So again, the Turbo Drive, if it can take a one-hit KO, it's a really powerful prospect. So that's really good stuff. Uh, my cat's just... <laughs> drop something and it's running all over the place okay um but yeah the ready steel good energy acceleration on top of the turbo drive so the idea of this deck is to get energy all over the place really um whenever you can take knockouts and attach energy at the same time it's gonna be really powerful ready steel being a metal typing is insane for the glaceon gx deck that's probably gonna come out in spades and be quite popular in early uh, tournaments so having weakness on that seems really powerful uh, the Iron Hand attack can just do 90, and uh, it's not too big of a deal. I think we want to be charging up other attackers, but this is a non-GX option if we need to. We also have a Rangaroo and Type Null, so it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Next up, we have the Tapu Lele GX. Uh, one attack, of course, and Energy Drive is still an option when we have this much energy acceleration, and we play DCEs, which is pretty cool. A Rangaroo for the Instruct is going to help keep us... Uh, cycling even in the late game situations. This is essentially a really similar shell to the build that we saw Crackler play to that second place. So um, there's not too much going on here. The big differences are the two cards down below. So two of your Dustmane Necrozmas as a strict upgrade to Celesteeda, I would say. Um, I think it's just overall way better of a card. Um, we gain the Claw Slash attack, which is kind of meh. Just three colorless and you do 60, that's fine. Uh, but Meteor Tempest doing 220 for... Three metal and a colorless. Yes, we have to discard three, but it's another big blowout attack. And it's something to build towards with max elixirs, turbo arms, and turbo drives. So that's really good for you. But also we have the Eclipse Sun GX attack, which I use in testing like as much, if not more, than the Rebel GX attack. Typically it's going to be early turbo arms or turbo drives plus elixirs that go towards Dustbane. Either they take the early prizes... And the Eclipse Sun can take this big knockout and then they can't deal with the 190 HP Pokemon. And then they pretty much always lose um, because you just manually attach once more the following turn and do Meteor Tempest for a follow-up KO. So he basically takes four prize off his own back. You've seen by now, like, we've done the Magnezone list, we've done the Turbo Metal list, and now this list. I'm trying to make this guy work in any way possible because his numbers are just insane. So just trying to make Duskmane work and finding a home for him will be... Probably one of the keys to making a top tier deck because his attacks are just so dangerous. The Just the amount of raw damage is just too good to pass up, really. So that's why we're testing so many different metal variants right now because the card really is insane. Um, so yeah, he's like your kind of mixed finisher alongside Sylvalai. Um, I feel like, yeah, his GX attack can really punish more aggressive lists, which is very good for you. Um, and then finally, this other new card from the Battle Boost uh, uh, expansion in Japan is going to be this Magina, which has the ability dress up as often as you like during your turn before you attack you may put a tool attached to one of your Pokemon into your hand so it's similar to the Masquerain but it's just a basic so it's like a really good card Krekler played Genesect EX now we can play this as like a pretty much strict upgrade once again so it's uh, less easy targets on the bench and it's more versatile than Genesect DX so feels like a pretty good option to have in the deck uh, we are playing mixed uh, tools 
Uh, we're playing, you know, two different memory cards and choice bands. So these are good to manipulate whenever we can uh, rescue them if we don't need them on certain turns, keep them protected against just random field blowers, which is very nice. And it even means that against things like Delisopod Zoroark, for example, where we hit for weakness on both of their attackers, if we've commit one to our Sylv ally and they can't field blower it off, or maybe they choose not to field blower it off because um, they then send in the attacker that has a different weakness, we could then do the old switcheroo with Magina and wreck them. So that could be a pretty cool like surprise factor if you can um, choose to keep it hidden in a game one situation. You can catch people off guard for that for certain. Um, but yeah, I hope this card comes out in the new set. Uh, I imagine it will. If it doesn't, I think you can, can still play Genesect DX or we could look at another one of the uh, tech options that we have uh, later on in the video. But yeah, I think for now, if we do get this card you probably will play it in the build it's just way better than the genesect dx so yeah that's going to be it for the pokemon onto the items fairly simple stuff the main trickery is going on with our tools as you can see down here um but yeah the staples of one stretcher we're going to play this over super odd because we uh attach so many energies from our discard pile a couple of field blowers we're not playing any stadiums once again in this list so having this against parallel city is nice and other um problematic stadiums in general additionally it can get rid of tools from garbador so we can get our free retreat from sylvalai back again if need be uh for max elixir for ultra ball just high accounts standard counts um we want to get as much energy acceleration as possible to get these dust mains rolling and uh, ultra ball going to be amazing for discarding metal energy as well uh, because we want to get them in the discard for our registeel and our sylvalai so just two of each of these tools. Space is the only real reason why I'm not going to be playing more. Uh, at one point in the theory craft, I had like three of each memory tool just really going hard for trying to take out Zoroarks and be like a really basic list where you're literally just saying, haha, I can hit for weakness every turn. Um, but instead, I've trimmed those down to play Skylers, which you'll see on the next slide. So even though we are playing two copies of some of these important cards, uh, with the Magina that we can like sort of put it, put them into play, then recover them after Sycamores. Or like you can put one into play, Sycamore, and then pick it back up to protect it for later. Additionally, we can Skylar into any of these two ofs where it's important. So Choice Band, as I mentioned, it's really nice for getting the 30 damage on with Registeels and then it does better damage with your Sylvalai. It also means that the uh, regular attack, the Meteor Tempest from Duskmane can do 250 as well, which is pretty good. Uh, for like Decidueyes, if you're missing out on uh, the fire tool or whatever. So it feels pretty good. So yeah, the card in the middle, the Japanese scan is just the fire memory. I didn't feel like putting the translation because it will just say that the Silvalo GX this card is attached to is a fire type Pokemon. So yeah, um, just like the fighting memory, we're using these to hit for weakness on the new metal stuff coming out, the new... Um, Leafeon coming out, Glycepod decks, Decidueye decks, and yeah, that's a pretty good array of cards right now. And uh, the Fighting Memory, obviously going to be really nice for Zoroark. So I think if ever I wanted to go up in tools, it would be either a third Choice Band or the third Fighting Memory. I think two Fire Memory is all we probably will ever need. Um, but for now, I'm happy with a 2-2-2 two, two, two split and see where that goes for the future. On Supporters, again, we're going to be pretty simple couple of Bridget's going to be really important to get our uh, type nulls on the board ASAP so we can evolve up into Sylvalai and once Sylvalai is on board we can freely retreat into things like Registeel way more easily and get those rolling so we can get the right attacks going at the right time so it doesn't really matter what we lead with with the deck as long as we can get into Sylvalai by a turn two it can be nice. Type null is ironically one of our worst starters because we have to essentially find a second type null in the same turn so that we can uh, evolve the one on the bench, which then gives the active one free retreat. Uh, because if we were just to evolve the Sylvalai in the active position, it would be detrimental for us unless we were able to attack on turn two. So yeah, Bridget going to be important as the two count. Uh, two copies of Skylar, as I mentioned, it's mainly in here to grab the right tool at the right time because essentially it means Skylar equals two prizes <laughs> if you think about it in a really basic way. But additionally, it's just more consistency cards than playing a physical higher count of uh, the tools themselves. So it makes sense to me. 
Uh, you could go down to one Skylar and just play a third Lele. That's something I've sort of debated a little bit, but for now I'm just fairly happy with the two copies, trying to be as simplistic as possible, really. Three copies of Guzma for the big old Switcherooski strategy. It means we can get out of our Silv Ally, which is nice, and then go into any free retreater if need be. Um, and it also is just going to make sure we're taking two prizes each turn, and that's what the deck's all about. We have weakness on a load of stuff, and we're also going to be doing big blowouts with Dustmane, hopefully, during the game as well. So getting into the high-priority targets is always going to be important. And then just the four copies of N and Sycamore. Um, still choosing these over Cynthia. I know there's a lot of people who always talk in the comments below of how good Cynthia is, and I agree, Cynthia can be great. Uh, obviously in here we need to max out Sycamore because we want to get rid of Metal Energies as much as possible um, in the early turns. <clears throat> and we're going to max out N because I always will prioritize N over Cynthia, I think. I Pretty much the first card that goes in every list is four copies of N for me. So um, that's just how I play the game because N is so important for stabilizing in close matchups. So uh, yeah, four N goes in over Cynthia every time, in my opinion, just because it's too strong right now. And uh, finally, just 14 energy, the split of 4 double colorless and 10 metal. 10 being a large amount so that we can get some in this card pile, as well as having some left in the deck to recover with max elixirs. So yeah, plenty of energy there. Hopefully we can uh, reload as much as possible and uh, get enough knockouts during the game <laughs> and get as much energy on the board as possible uh, with all of our different means of accelerating. So here is the list in full. Pause now if you wish. It will also be in the description as always. But yeah, it feels fairly uh, straightforward. The deck is definitely more focused on taking two prize knockouts whenever possible. Uh, Sylvalai can do good one-hit KOs on basic stuff, which is nice uh, if we need him to. But we don't really have any like healing like Ace of Roller or even Parallel City right now um, to really keep up with non-GX in the EX decks. That's kind of one of the weaknesses of this list. It way prefers dealing with two prize Pokemon just naturally because Dustmane requires big discards. Sylvalai is committing to hit for weakness, so we're trying to hit these big numbers. But for now, I feel like we do cover quite a lot with the metal typing plus the two tools that we have available. I think we really do catch a lot of things up uh, damage-wise, so that's really strong. And I think even things where we don't hit for weakness, think of things like Buzzwell. They're probably going to be going aggressive on you, trying to target down things like type nulls with Buzzwell. Then they take the first uh, prize or two prizes. We can punish them instantly with Dustmane Necrozma. And essentially they need to be able to spam some Max Elixir to get back into the game. Otherwise they'll like always lose. So I think even against things where we don't have type coverage, you can still be quite powerful. Everything else looks fairly straightforward. I think messing around with the Skylar, the Lele counts could be reasonable. And as well as the tool count, uh, basically just wait and see. Uh, perhaps how popular some of the new archetypes are, uh, whether or not fire energies are even worth it in the first place. I think they probably will be in a sort of blind man's meta going into a new tournament in the new format, but um, who knows, they may be uh, underplayed or just not picked up in the early events just because they're sort of a risk. Who knows? It's going to be one to wait and see, really. On to tech options. Uh, there's still more metal stuff that we could be playing. It was surprising for me that I ended up not playing uh, Prism Star Solgaleo. He's so good for energy acceleration, and his own attack is insane as well. So it's like, it's such a powerful card. It's incredible to me that we're not playing him. But I think we have enough energy acceleration with the Registeel plus the uh, Silvalli GX. I think we don't need this extra burst, although... I mean, I'm not going to debate with you why you should or shouldn't play this card. My main reason why I don't play it is because we don't actually get enough energy in the discard pile to make full use of him. Uh, because unlike the Turbo Metal list, we're not using Dust Main every turn. We're normally using his main attack like once, really. Um, so you don't need a huge reload. You just need this additional Elixir here or there or the additional Registeel here or there. So I think he's not mandatory, but he's still such an insane card. Like, making space for him is definitely reasonable. Kartana's good, uh, just getting some discard and also having the option to Blade GX if you really need to. But we're normally quite reliant on our other GX attacks. And Celesteela was the previous card played in the list. You can still play one, maybe, um, because you do have Fighting Resistance, which can improve your Buzzwall matchup. Blaster GX is still a good GX attack to go for. 
and uh, Rocket Fall isn't too bad at just getting two Hikikos anyway on a big 200 HP Pokemon. Zorak GX, this was sort of paired with some of the Silver Ally lists that did fairly reasonably at London, so um, having some extra trades can get um, Metal Energies in the discard pile, so there is synergy there, and we already played DCE, so I think there's definitely some cause and reason to play uh, Zoroark GX. I think if you are going to play Zoroark, you have to play things like Acerola to sort of go more down the two-hit KO route, but I think the way I'm trying to build it now that we have better metal attackers, I want to be one-hit KOing like, a lot more, so I think Zoroark doesn't quite fit as easily in here, but it could still be a good end-proofing mechanism, and you know, again, it's just one of these cards that's so powerful. You can shove them into anything and it's never really wrong. And then a couple of psychic types in here for more protection against Boswell. Uh, Latios is actually like a really inherently good card. Like I was saying with uh, the uh, Registeel, getting 30 pokes on things can be really influential. The Latios can do it way more consistently because you can choose to also ping a Lele on the bench, which is almost always there. And then you can set up for a turbo arm knockout at any point in the game. And that's going to be really nice for your progression of taking the actual six prize cards. So Latios could be really good in addition to being help against Boswell. Um, and there's also the Mewtwo. This could be if Boswell's like a real threat. Uh, we are, of course, weak to fighting with the Sylvalai. But there are other parts of the deck that we can sort of focus more on. I think that's why I'm not playing Mewtwo right now. Latios would be my consideration before the Mewtwo personally. Uh, I think that could be worth throwing in. It's similar to a Tapu Koko because it will also have free retreat once your Silver Allies online. So it is definitely the better inclusion, I would say. One sort of more wild card Pokemon you could think about playing is the Shining Genesect. Uh, I was thinking of playing exactly one copy of Grass Energy because you can recycle it with uh, your um, Silver Ally anyway. Um, we could go for an Energy Reload and have the Gaia Blaster available for uh, Lycanroc. Uh, because with the choice band we get there or you could have um, an extra option against Greninja which is definitely one of your worst matchups so I think the Genesect is definitely too cute right now but uh, once the metal set once the meta settles uh, having an answer to Greninja or Lycanroc may be important so shoving that guy in feels a little bit weird but who knows it could pay off in random spots uh, special charge, just if e hammer still everywhere, could be mandatory. I like the inclusion of the card because DC is important. But again, now that we're not playing Celesteela, DC is less valuable and basic metals are still like a fairly high priority. So I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Uh, as I mentioned the, with the Zoroark, uh, we're much more aggressive when we have a better attacker in the list. So Acerella feels a little bit less useful because we'll try and end games much quicker. And the Parallel City could definitely be a great stadium to add into the, into the deck. Pretty much any deck that can fit Parallel City right now should. And uh, it's just powerful against a lot of different things. Because we're not forced into playing any single stadium, the Parallel could definitely be an option here that is just potent against a lot of different things. Uh, reducing the damage of certain decks or just uh, reducing their bench or reducing your own bench to effectively heal or remove damage threats uh, could be really good for you. So... I think trying to squeeze in one parallel would probably be the first card that I look to do alongside the Latios. I think they're both very, very good options that we could try and squeeze in somehow. But as I say, I always like to show off the most basic list first and you guys can start teching out if ever you wish. Onto the matchups. The only big concerns I feel are Greninja uh, because it's going to be a lot of attacks for you to get through all these Greninjas and uh, none of them, none of our attackers do it very efficiently at all. Uh, so that's just pretty awkward all around. I think it's pretty much the auto loss for this deck. Volcanion as well feels pretty awkward. Only if they can jam heavily with the baby Volk. Um, that's going to be really awkward for early Registeel pressure. It's going to be annoying if ever we try and set up Dustmane. We really will have to go more heavily down <clears throat> the Sylvalai GX route. But even that can only cap at 120. You don't want to GX attack the baby Volk. That's just a pain. So we're always going to be the one looking to need to Guzma. And that just puts us a little bit behind, I would think. And also the Garchomp Lucario, just like Greninja in that it's lots of single prizes that we have to deal with. This deck isn't very sustainable with its attacks, um, although it is still better than like Turbo Metal in that regard. Um, I think the um, Sylvalai trades fairly poorly with the Garchomps themselves and Lucario as well, um, because that can be a fighting attacker alongside the fighting Garchomp, which is also a threat for you. So... 
I think that would just naturally be quite a bad matchup also. Other than that, like, it looks to have a really nice matchup spread. It's not care- It doesn't care about Mill. It doesn't care about uh, Glaceon, which is a big deal for me. Um, it's good against some of the top tier stuff, I would think. Or, like, at least can compete. Zorak always has the draw engine, so it's always going to be, like, more consistent at getting its set up against you. Uh, and there's more situations where you can be the one dead drawing and be a little bit behind. Enhanced Hammer as well could be a balancing factor for the Zorak builds, but... Just having the type coverage and being able to blow this stuff up so consistently is going to be really, really nice. I think it's, you know, easily like a 50-50 matchup for this deck against Zoroark stuff. So I think overall its matchup spread is pretty good with only a couple sort of issues for the deck right now. So on to the closing thoughts. The deck is definitely just like way more powerful than it was for London. And we saw how well it did previously. So that does give me hope for this archetype. Um... Just getting more type coverage is also just going to be really good. Um, people basically didn't play the Psychic Memory, uh, or only a few people played Psychic Memory in London, but now Fire Memory seems to be really, really powerful and probably has to be inserted into your Sylvalli lists. So once again, this deck sort of pops up as the counter everything dot deck, and uh, it's down to how consistently it can set up to see how well it can perform. As I mentioned a couple of times, e is probably still a big concern for this deck. Maybe the reason why it still won't be much of a factor in the metagame just because setting the silver ally back a turn or two is really really bad even though we have elixir and turbo uh drive attachments from the discard pile and from the deck double colors is still the main thing that we need most turns and something like e hammer n attack the face can be really bad for you if you can't really respond out of it so i think that's always been the achilles heel of silver ally since it's been released uh, but overall, this does seem like a more sustainable Turbo Metal list to me. I think it's a little clunkier than Turbo Metal, because naturally we're trying to jam in the Stage 1, and we do have a bit more versatility than Turbo Metal. That's sort of one good thing, um, because we have different attacking threats at different times, whereas Turbo Metal is all about just going hard with Dustmane and just making him work. Um, so I think they're very comparable lists. Let me know which one you prefer. Uh, is Sylvalli just better overall, or do you think the Turbo Metal approach is the best way to build Dustmane? I'm convinced he's one of the best attackers in the game. I'm convinced his numbers are just too absurd to not take advantage of, that we have to make him a factor in the metagame, and it's just figuring out the best direction for him. Is it going to be in Metagross? Is it going to be in Magnazone? Is it going to be in this list? Is it going to be in Turbo Metals? Let me hear your thoughts about Dustmane down below. He surely can't be bad we just need to make sure he uh is accompanied by the right targets and he's just going to do really well i can imagine in tournaments so that's my two cents on uh the Silvalli list definitely a good upgrade from what it has been previously one of the decks that's almost gained the most out of any other uh going into ultra or coming out from ultra prison so that's something that's not been on the radars of many people but i still think it can have a place in the metagame with these new additions so please leave a like to this video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. For now though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.